Ready to answer a question, Robert? Are you braced for impact, sir? Yes, I am braced. <laughs> well braced. Bring it on. At Techno Hermit tweets, are 4K TVs finally good enough for desktop computers instead of 4K monitors, color accuracy, etc.? Maybe. Depends <laughs> on the 4K TV. Yeah. You would... Uh, Every 4K TV can act as a 4K monitor. So yes. by using either DVI or HDMI or DisplayPort, whatever output your your computer has, if, if the graphics chipset supports 4K output, you can connect that to most TVs uh, that support 4K resolution. The scaling can be done pixel to pixel, so you're not dealing with overscan or anything like that. Uh, right. The big things you won't be able to do really would be stuff like high dynamic range support or, you know, wide color gamut support. If you're, if you're thinking of somehow making that your, your video player, uh, your PC as your source of your HDR content, not so much. But in terms of just using it as a display, connect it. Uh, many of these 4K TVs actually will support 1080p resolution input at 120 hertz. The bandwidth would be equivalent to doing, say, 4K at 60 hertz, or actually right. 4K at 30 hertz. Uh, so there is that in mind. Um, generally, with any TV, if you're connecting a computer to it, you want to use the TV's cinema or picture pre or movie picture preset. That will mm -hmm. enable the least amount of possible artifact or enhancement features that could interfere with the picture quality. Uh, things like sharpening or anything else that could interfere, especially with text. Uh, if you want right. to read the text clearly, you want to make sure things like sharpness are turned down. Generally, that movie or cinema picture preset will just automatically take care of that for you. Now, as far as response time goes, uh, you might find that the TV's game mode or one of the TV's presets offers a better response time for a gaming scenario. Right. Um, and then beyond that, uh, it, I think it would really come down to just the size of the screen. If you're going to find yourself moving your head left to right just to see the entire screen in all one shot, that might not be the best scenario for you. It, you may not need a 40-plus-inch computer monitor. Um, right. Just be aware of the ergonomics involved uh, when you're dealing with stuff like that. Well, and that's – I mean, I, I remember people – remember playing around back in the day we would have like, you know, early 480p monitors – and you would watch people because they were like 40 inch monitors. They're these big television screens and they were great for DVDs. But if you tried to use them as a monitor, you ended up doing the sort of, you know, I'm playing tennis as I'm trying to read something. And 4K kind of eliminates that because of the pixel density on the screen. Um, but if you, you know, a, at 40 inches is really big for a desktop monitor. 32 inches isn't that bad. Um, the... Uh, Get your viewing distance right and make sure that you're not physically moving your head all over the place just to do basic right. work or to perceive the content you're trying to look at. One other thing that relates to 4K TVs and PC use uh, has to do with the color quality. Um, most computers, when they're connected to a regular PC monitor, will be delivering full RGB, uncompressed video in a sense. Uh, right the full signal for red, blue, and green, uh, it'd be a digital or analog, depending on how you have it connected. Most, most of the time now it's going to be digital. Uh, right. Some TVs actually have a setting built in to the display where it enables what they call sometimes UHD color or, or just an expanded color palette. Uh, in particular, it deals with getting full color support into the monitor from the PC. And you may have to enable that. There's some really basic test patterns that you can display in a browser window or whatever, mm -hmm. just to show you if you're getting that, what they call 444 color RGB right. uh, from, from, your, from your source device, the computer, uh, into the TV and if it's displaying properly. Some, some 4K TVs, especially the older ones, were unable to do that true 444 uncompressed color information and they would default down to something that was a little more compressed, but giving you mostly the same visual result. Uh, however, if you want that full experience, that's something else to look out for. Uh, on Samsung TVs, I see it as UHD color. On other mm -hmm. brands of TVs, it's labeled something a little bit different. Uh, but usually it's something you have to enable per port on the TV itself. So once that's done, it's kind of like set it and forget it. You don't have to worry about, uh, worry about it too much. Um, other than that, uh, also consider too, are you paying for stuff you don't need? Like, do you not need speakers in a TV? That might be another reason to go for a right. monitor. Uh, Can you even find speakers? I mean, you know, as I think I, what a lot of people are doing, including myself, you've seen like a 28 or 32 inch, you know, 4K HD TV. Why? Well, I don't care because I want to put it three feet in front of me on a desktop. And, you know, is that, you know, $400 
HD TV or, or UHD TV or 4K TV going to hang with a, you know, a $700 or $1,000, you know, well, okay, let me put it this way. It's not going to hang with a, with a, you know, an ultra, a Dell ultra sharp. It's not, <laughs> you know, but probably not. And then a lot of um, desktop PC displays too can be pre-configured from the factory to have right. accurate color or something like that, where it's an, it, it's fairly well known performance right out of the box. Whereas with some TVs, you're going to have to dig into the settings. Hopefully, the manufacturer right. did a good job on it. Uh, otherwise, too, also be aware of just how – what desktop platform are you in? I find within Windows, uh, I bought a smaller notebook recently that had the scaling within Windows turned up to 150 percent to make it usable. <laughs> And yeah. what that does will then, you know, slightly soften all the icons and other things on the screen, whereas I want that one-to-one -one pixel ratio. So do yourself a favor and tr yeah. try to look at the native one-to-one -one resolution on any display you're going to be using and see if it's too many pixels, literally. Uh, if you set that 4K monitor, if you're delivering 4K output to it, is the desktop at one-to-one -one pixel mapping just simply too small or is everything just too damn tiny? And will you right. be then forced to use some scaling to make it all usable? Otherwise, you could have saved some money and went with, say, like a 1080p version of the TV or a slightly higher but smaller uh, resolution PC monitor, something like that. So just you kind of got to balance everything in perspective in terms of just, you know, the size of the screen versus the size of the pixels versus what it is you're feeding it and are you going to be able to work with it. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Oh but otherwise, there's no technical reason. Yeah. I mean, LCD TVs regardless of the resolution are you know can be used with any computer yeah. nowadays with a just, variety of different input types so just don't buy one of the 30 hertz ones if you can still find one out there <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i don't think they're around and that's one of the tough things too if you're trying to do 4k 60 on right. a pc monitor you're likely using display port and uh something to keep in mind although i haven't messed with the latest hdmi 2.0 cards to see if now they support 4k 60 over that interface as well You'll figure it out. <laughs> at least at least the PC hardware is ready to go. It's just a matter of getting the right connection right. and finding a display you can live with.